everybody, and welcome to That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough, and I am Tanya Yarbrough, and this is 2016, the very first show, episode 70, which I'm just going to call New Year's Hodgepodge. You know, when you just don't know what to talk about, we've had so much stuff going on, I'm sure, in your life as well as mine, and uh, there's been a lot of big news, a lot of craziness, and so I just kind of had a lot of ideas in my head. There is a sort of a, a through theme on this one, and it has to do with just the general subject of you know, shubs, shubsters. Oh, so for those of you who've never heard this show before, this is the show, the radio podcast, what have you, a modern day kind of radio, uh, where we talk about the dogs we love and the stupid human behaviors we don't, also known as shubs. So, um, and it's also a way to keep me from cursing as much this year. So I'm going to try to clean it up just a little bit, but y'all can just call me out on my mistakes. So... <laughs> Because <laughs> um, I make a lot. Anyway, um, so this is uh, just to give those who are here in Los Angeles where I am located, I do have some new classes coming up on this Saturday, which is just two days from today. Um, this is already the 7th, so on the 9th. Um, we had so many people sign up for basic obedience that we actually had to open up another class. I opened up another one at 3 o'clock on Saturday, and there might be a few spaces left. So if you thought that you couldn't get in because it was closed, there is a new one. So go to the Blue Collar Working Dog dot com website and check out the training tab and sign up for that if you're interested um and then when it comes to other things coming up the pack leadership seminar will be actually on the 24th and not the 17th usually it is on the third sunday of the month but this year because it was you know the first weekend of January of the new year was actually so close to the first, I just kind of skipped that weekend because some people are still traveling because it was convenient to stay over for the whole weekend. So I just want everybody to settle in and, and all that stuff. So January 24th will be the almost world famous um, Pack Leadership 101 seminar for uh, just the people, the dog owners, or maybe future dog owners who want to uh, get a heads up on how to actually interact with your dog so that you can be your own dog whisperer and not create problems you didn't want to have in the first place. And if your dog already has problems, you might be able to solve them just by what you learn in the seminar. So um, it is what I call the longest running um, one woman show, a comedy show about dogs. Um, it's been going on for almost like seven years now. So anyway, that's the news for what's coming up uh, locally. If you need to find anything else, you can find me on Facebook at That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough. Also on Instagram at That Dog Training Show and on Twitter Kazzy Dog Train, because I ran out of space. K-A-Z-Z-I Dog Train. Ing is implied. Train ing is ing is implied. So anyway, uh, you can ask me questions, bring up topics uh, and, in an open form or in a private Facebook message and uh, contact me that way. I'd be glad to either make it a part of the show with your permission or we can just, you know, talk about it on Facebook or what have you and go back and forth and get some info because I am all about sharing info. That is my mission. So I had an interesting experience because uh, starting off this last Saturday, I had Saturday classes open, or I'm sorry, Sunday classes open up. So on the 3rd, I, you know, for those who were early birds, got a chance to get started. And um, I had only one person sign up for the puppy class, the puppy socialization class. And no offense to the lady, she actually decided to refund her money, and here's why. Um at least from my understanding, and what she told me in the class. And that is that the concept of puppy socialization or even dog socialization is really misconstrued for people. They just understand it as being dogs playing together. This is a play date. And the reality is, is that that is not the whole of and not the main focus of socialization for dogs, puppy or adult. And it's actually meant to act, it's, it's, I suppose, a better way to, to, to phrase socialization is teaching dogs to actually be desensitized to distractions to, and to discover new textures and sounds and uh, so forth without fear. There is a certain point in a dog's development in their puppy ages, that's about five, six months, where things kind of become fearful automatically as opposed to, wow, interesting, let me check this out. And so we want to take advantage of those like beginning months to actually t 
teach the dog to check things out in a very safe way and also teach the owners how to deal with if the puppy does freak out or if your dog does freak out with a particular experience how to handle it so it becomes a non freak out situation that is actually what socialization is about the play with other dogs is important but it's about also teaching most importantly the 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 humans what is proper play what is improper play when is it that your dog's kind of being an over excited a-hole about things that's about as mean as i'm going to get on this show um and when is it that your puppy's being too timid and how to back them up and how to encourage them to do the to to do the right things to pick up cues from other dogs and respect those cues instead of just keep harassing them or to just fall apart and hide in a corner somewhere which is not good either so it's kind of sad because she was really upset that there was no other dogs with me, which on the first day of class, I do not, on puppy socialization, I do not have the puppies like run into each other. We have to find out their energy levels and their styles before I start mixing them up anyway. But she really just wanted a play date. She didn't want to hear about crate training. She didn't want to hear about all these other things. And um, so I, it, she left the class. So I just want to like kind of, you know, inform you through this experience that it's puppy socialization play dates are not as important as you think they are and they have to be highly supervised and watched you need to watch what your dog is doing and watch learn something about body language from puppies and dogs and know how to like foster confidence without being you know fostering bullying which is a big reason why I don't like dog parks because nobody's paying attention except a few people and then you know, we, we actually end up teaching the dogs to be fearful or crazy. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not what people think. So anyway, um, it, that leads me to the whole thing about, you know, what people think is friendly. And if you, if you've listened to this podcast before, you've heard me mention this several times, but I had a recent experience where I was, um, uh, boarding and training a, uh, mini Australian shepherd. You've heard about her before. Her name's Margo and she's a spaz monkey. And because when she goes to her owners, and this time it's been for a long time, she re- re- reverted to a lot of crazy behaviors and can't sit still, can't, you know, like everything. She looks like she's on cocaine. She's just speeding along. Just <laughs> So um, I was going to a 7-Eleven to actually rent a little movie in, from a Redbox vendor and bring her along and kind of work with her a little bit on distractions. And as I'm coming across the street, I see this other person who's already on the other side of the street. He's coming towards me with this sort of chocolate lab mix thing on a harness way ahead of him. <laughs> Warning sign. And the dog all of a sudden starts crouching and slowing down and rubbing up against the half wall and looking like a stalker, which really is what that means. And um, so I'm like, uh uh-uh. I move my dog on the other side of me so that my body's between Margot and that stalker over there. I go up to the, you know, there's a little incline to get up to the sidewalk where the red box, you know, video vendor is. And sure enough, this shubster has got his dog right up on Margo's butt. And I'm putting my body in between and keep changing positions. And I'm like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he's not listening. He doesn't care. The dog is now coming nose to nose to Margo because I happened to look up at the red box and he took advantage of that let his dog come right up to nose to nose to margo and the hair is hackled up and he even growls and he's like oh he's friendly and i said no contact on leash oh it's so it's okay i'm like get i mean i think on by the time i was about to finish the second request i think i had the look of i will kill you if you get any closer and so the guy just left and he kept saying to his dog it's okay it's all right and i just wanted to remove some body parts actually i'm like no it's not you didn't hear the dog growl he's not looking at the body language he just assumes that because his dog has never been bitten or hasn't bitten anybody yet that his dog is friendly um excitement to see another dog is not the same thing as friendliness folks so if this is the first time you've heard this you need to keep paying attention to this podcast because i'm here to let you know You don't know all the things you should know. I don't know all the things I should know. And this is a huge, huge problem. This leads to a lot of behavioral issues or or actual injuries that could lead to your dog being put down because you thought that it was friendly. 
uh, or you accepted that the other dog was friendly because the owner said so. And that is usually not true. It's kind of like if some, you know, ladies, you know this, if a guy asks you out and the first thing that comes out of his mouth is, I'm a really nice guy, that means get the hell away. That means get away. He's a serial killer. Don't don't fall, fall for that. If he had to say that, then he's advertising falsely and you need to get out. So if he is already a nice guy, it would not occur to him to say that. You all know. You ladies know. And guys who date other guys, you know too. So and maybe you're looking for that kind of trouble, but I'm not going to talk about it. So anyway, the deal is, is that when it comes to someone saying their dog is friendly and the dog's language is anything but relaxed – get the hell away. That's it. And your dog knows this. Your dog knows better than you by the smell coming up the street that that dog is kind of going to lose their, you know, their turds right there. They're just going to lose it. So you need to pay attention to the body language and let your dog be clear. If your dog's not responding well, even if the other dog is doing just fine and very relaxed, if your dog's not responding well, respect the body language of your dog and back them up and let them know you'll take care of the situation, even though it's not a big deal. All right. So I just is a big reminder and it's something that all of you who've been posting on Facebook um, on that dog training show with Tanya Yarbrough, you've been bringing this up and and it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem worldwide, but it's, it's particularly intense here in Los Angeles in the United States. Just this whole sort of anthropomorphizing their, their desires onto their dogs. My dog is friendly. Um, you know, is such a blanket, um, you know, (laughs) it's a blanket label that kind of gives them plausible denial.